Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and you're watching a video where I give an overview to Final Fantasy XI Online and introduce you to the private server Nozomi. Now most of the regulars to this channel are players of World of Warcraft private servers, but before I started playing World of Warcraft, I was a keen player of Final Fantasy XI Online. It was first released in 2002 when the landscape for MMOs was very different. Like many other players of Final Fantasy XI, we viewed World of Warcraft as a casual MMO and very much an easy mode online game. That might trigger a lot of you Warcraft players out there, but stick around and you'll find out why. First of all, let's get to the meat of what Nozomi is. Nozomi is a Final Fantasy XI online private server that sets the game to the 2005 version, so this means that as well as the base game, you'll also get to play Rise of the Zillart and Chains of Promethea expansions. On a normal night during the week, you'll see around 800 to 900 players online, so it makes it by far the most popular Final Fantasy XI private server. But maybe you already know what Final Fantasy XI is all about, and you don't need to wait until the second half of this video where I give a beginner's guide to the game. You might be foaming at the mouth already and just want to know how you can jump in on this free gaming experience. Well, this is how. You want to get over to nozomi.com right now. There you'll see a link on the left-hand side that will lead you to their download page. You can either use a BitTorrent or a direct download to download the game installer, which is about five gig. If you're wondering how to create an account to play with, it's not done on the website. It's actually done through the game client itself. You'll see this once you've downloaded the client and have it running. You'll see the prompt box where you can create a free account or log in with one you've already made. When you do log into this prompt box with an account, you'll be shortly thrust into the game. Anyone that has played Final Fantasy XI before for knows where it goes from here but if this is your first time with the game I'll provide some basic information. So you'll need to make a character. The first choice presented to you is human or Hume as it's called in Final Fantasy 11. You can choose to play as either male or female. I don't think this makes any difference to your stats. The next race is Elven. They do have different base stats to the human so it's worth noting what you think is important to you. Again you can select either male or female. After to this we have the lovable Taru Taru. You could compare these to gnomes in World of Warcraft but let's be honest these guys are much better. They're also the only other race that offers a male or female option. Next we have the Mithra which are well They are a race of cat-like female warriors. Remember, this is a Japanese game, so of course it's got cat girls in it. With this race, thankfully, there is no male option. Finally, we have the Galka. They have the highest base strength stat in the game, so are suited to melee combat. This is also the race I have chosen for this video. Now you have a few options to customise the look of your character, and then you choose what class you'd like to play as. Here you can select Warrior, Monk, White Mage, Black Mage, Red Mage and Thief. This choice is not one you have to live and die by though, because unlike something like World of Warcraft, you can change your class at any time. But this game will actually take you beyond that with the system it has called Subjobs. You see, you could be a warrior monk, a mage thief, or any combination, because once you hit a certain level, you are no longer just the main jobs you select, so there are no longer just a mage or just a warrior or just a monk or whatever you can combine that with any other job that you see fit so you fancy being a paladin well just combine warrior and white mage jobs just remember that final fantasy lets you change and combine different jobs whenever you like sure you do have to level them up separately but at least you have the choice after the job selection you choose which of the three capital cities you would like to belong to you have the kingdom of sandioria which is basically europe which with its medieval style architecture you have the republic of bastok which represents america or you have the federation of wind 
Lyndhurst, which is like Japan because it's happy yet a bit mad. I'd recommend choosing Sandioria as it seems to be the one most players are going to and you'll need other players to get anywhere in this game. So I began playing with Big Jeffy and started with making sure my home point was set to this city. It probably is anyway, but I like to be sure. Then I began my first quest. Something you should know is that NPCs in this game will give you no indication that they offer a quest. So you'll need to speak to everyone and actually learn about your surroundings. Anyway, so this guy gives you a mission to go and kill one of the orcs near the city gates. They drop an axe and this guy wants that axe as proof that you killed one. So this is the first mission from one of the first NPCs that you'll see in the game. So naturally, you leave the city, walk around outside for a bit, and once you spot an orc, you go and attack it. Is this what you would do? Congratulations, you're dead. What you should have done is one, equip the sword that the game didn't tell you was in your inventory the whole time. Two, use the check command before attacking anything so you know if you have a chance or not. Three, get someone to help you because you have no chance of killing an orc. They are way too strong for any low level player. Once you do all these things and you kill the orc, the game will say that you found the orcish axe that you need for your mission, but you don't actually have the item yet. All these items that you get while you're in a group go into a party loophole. You have to select the item that you want from the loophole and roll for it. If no one else rolls, or you're the highest roller, you get the item. You'll probably be low on health points at this moment, but you won't get them back simply by not being in combat. No, you need to stop moving and type slash heal so your character sits on the ground and replenishes health back slowly. Now you can run back to the NPC, talk to him and nothing will happen. That's right, just talking to the quest NPC with the item in your bag is not enough to actually complete the quest. You have to select the trade option from the menu and give the NPC the item they want that way. So that's the real basics covered. You don't really have any fighting abilities at this point, apart from your two hour, which as the name suggests, is a special move you can use once every two hours. Now that's a proper cooldown. None of this five minute casual shit. So what else can I tell you? Well, there is an auction house for players to use. It already lists each different item that you can buy, but shows how many of that item are currently up for auction, plus the price history. But this is not the only way players can sell items to each other. Every player can put themselves into bizarre mode, which shows a little bag item by their name. This means if you check that player, you can see what items they have for sale and buy it directly from the player right there and then. This is a good way for players to get their stuff noticed by other players quickly, but doing this in a capital city will add a city tax to the price of the item. Another useful thing to know when you begin playing is that you start with an item called Adventurer's Coupon. This is redeemable with a certain NPC for Gil, which is the currency used in Final Fantasy XI. The last piece of essential information to know that when you're starting off, you should always try and have a buff called Signet applied. With this buff applied, when you kill monsters in the world, you will be awarded extra very useful items you get this buff from a particular npc in the city but things like how to do attack combos when to use certain moves after other party member uses a certain move to perform a link chain damage how you use airships to travel around where you're allowed to rent a chocobo from how to craft items and what you can do in your own player housing i'll leave all that for you to discover in game as discover is half the fun. So if you're a Warcraft player that fancies an actual challenge, or maybe you've heard of this game but never tried it, or maybe you're an old Final Fantasy XI player and that wants to return to the game, or someone that just wants to play MMOs for free because they could never pay for the subscription fee, then head on over to nozomi.com and give Final Fantasy XI Online a try. 
that's it for now. Ah, bye. <laughs>